but the type of change that Christ said it like this, be ye not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't care really what you really look like and, and the, the way you act as much as I want to know what is going on in your thought process. What is going on in your mind? Because I know By the way you look and by the way you act. Can you say amen? amen? You see, we have to get past the place where we need to constantly convince or remind ourselves that we're godly. We have got to get past the place that we constantly remind ourselves that we are Christians. And we need to get to the place where we don't have to think about it when we wake up. Because our minds have been permanently altered. Our minds have been changed in such a way that I never think of whether or not to quit God. I never think of whether or not I'm going to praise Him today because I have troubles. No, my mind has been transformed. My God has delivered me. My God is worthy of praise. And, and there are some things in my life that I don't have to think about anymore. I don't think about it. I'm going to go to church on Sunday. It's all about what I'm going to wear on Saturday. I've made up my mind on Saturday that Sunday is just a part of what I'm going to do. And so I begin to dress my spirit, if you will. I go into prayer. I go into praise. And I begin to tell God, I'm just warming up. I'm just getting ready for tomorrow. I'm just getting ready to see your face. And behold your glory. Man. I want someone, I want everybody to do me a favor this morning. We don't normally have to ask you to do this, but I want you to close your Bibles. And I want you to view the wording that's on your Bibles this morning. Look at those beautiful words you see on the cover of your Bible. What might be on the side. But you'll notice written on your Bible somewhere are the words, Holy Bible. Yes. Amen? Amen? Wonder if anybody has ever wondered what it is that makes your Bible holy. Anybody ever wonder why it's not simply called Bible? But he gave it the name of Holy Bible. Amen. The land of Israel is referred to as the Holy Land. And I ask you this morning, what is it about Israel that sets this land apart from the surrounding land? Or the surrounding countries for that matter? You see, there is nothing spectacular about Israel. There is nothing truly special or unusual about Israel's terrain. The land is primarily desert, like us, filled with rocks, kind of like us, probably snakes and lizards too. Amen. It has a lifeless landscape, if you will. You see, Israel's streets are filled with crime, like ours. It's a land that is filled with that which is vile and corrupt, like many other nations or many other countries. It is a land of political unrest. So what is it about this little country called Israel that makes it holy? You can refer to the city of Jerusalem, which is commonly referred to as the what? Holy City. And I have read about Jerusalem. I have never been, but my wife has. I have seen pictures and heard stories of the streets of old Jerusalem and of new Jerusalem. I have witnessed through modern media crime as Israeli soldiers armed with their machine guns walk across their streets. We don't even do that here. But they walk across their streets protecting their people. And so again I ask this very simple yet profound question. What is it about Jerusalem? That makes it a holy city. I want to help us this morning to better understand biblical subjects. You see the country of Israel and the city of Jerusalem are holy because...
because of one reason. And one reason only. That reason they are called and determined to be holy is because they belong to God. I said the reason why these entities are holy is because they belong to God. The Holy Bible is not man's book. Man did not write it. Man did not preserve it. He did not inspire it. So it isn't his. On the other hand, God did write it. And God did preserve it. And God did inspire it. And so the Bible belongs to God. It's God's book. And that's why we call it the Holy Bible. Because the Bible is God and it belongs to Him. Israel is God's land given by God to His people. The city of Jerusalem is God's city. A city where the Bible tells me He will one day return and rule and reign for a thousand years on this thing we call earth. It is referred to to us as the millennium. But can I tell you, it is God's city. And God's going to set Himself back something else that belongs to God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, he said, What? Know ye not that your body is the what? The temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God and are not of your own. For you were bought with a price. That price being the precious blood of Jesus. As he went to that place called Calvary. And died for your sins and my sins. And the sins for every sinner. That they could go to a place called heaven. But he said know this. That you are the temple of God. And you don't own yourself. I own you. And if I truly own you. Then that means I can look to you. And ask you a simple question. Are you holy? Do you live holy? Do you walk holy? Do you stay holy? Do you lift me up in a holy conversation? Come on somebody hear me. God is trying to tell us something. That there's something about us. That is supposed to identify. That we belong to Him. Amen. Amen. You're a child of God. And you've been saved from hell by the circumcision without hands. The circumcision of Jesus Christ. And you don't belong to yourself. And because you belong to God, we are to be just as the Bible is. Just as Israel is. Just as Jerusalem is. Holy. And acceptable. And so I ask you again this morning. How holy is your life? How much of your life belongs to God? How holy is your walk? How holy are your words? How holy are your thoughts? For you being the temple of God. Belong to Him. You aren't your own anymore. You made that day, you mind your mind up the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And I want us to understand the severity of this thing called holy. In 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, it gives us some insight to the severity of this matter. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. And the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man defile the temple of God. We do things to this temple that are unbecoming of God. That don't belong to the things of God or to the instruction of God. 